In this special episode of Neo Cash Radio, we discuss a publicly traded Dash master node company called Neptune Dash. With us is Troy Wong, the CFO and director. Troy, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, Troy, well, you're the uh, the CFO and director of Neptune Dash. Is that right? Yeah, I'm. I'm the co-founder uh, of the company with with our CEO Kale Moody, and we. We jointly um, operate the company together. Troy, can you just give me a brief, uh, a brief overview of your involvement with crypto? You know how you how you discovered it and how long you've been sort of working in that space. Great. So um, I uh, have been interested in cryptocurrencies for for three years. Um, I remember in 2013, actually, like trying to find my way in the crypto space and actually had a Skype meeting with, with Anthony DiOrio, um, one of the founders of Ethereum. Um, I was in Vancouver at the time and he was in Toronto. And uh, Anthony at the time had just set up um, the Decentral House uh, in, here in Toronto where I now live. And uh, a year later, um, Ethereum started. And I sort of missed uh, that, that, that sort of bull run and that amazing opportunity to to work with Anthony and be part of Ethereum, had I just sort of stuck with my convictions and, and, and left my my corporate job and gone all into cryptocurrencies. And so at the beginning of 2017, when cryptocurrencies really began, began to um, gain a lot of popularity um, in, in, the, in the markets, uh, I really just sort of went through a time of self-reflection and left my job and went all into cryptocurrencies. So I've been working um, on a full-time basis in blockchain for um, a little bit over a year now. And I actually rejoined um, Anthony Diorio and, and briefly worked with him as his CFO at Jax and Decentral um, for the, the Jax multi-asset wallet um, and uh, in the office here in, in downtown Toronto. And so I uh, worked with them for a little bit and then decided that I wanted to start my own blockchain company. And I started Neptune Dash. Well, let's talk a little bit about what Neptune Dash is. Absolutely. So uh, Neptune Dash Technologies Corp um, is the world's first publicly traded uh, master node company. Um, and it's the world's first publicly traded company um, whose assets specialize in a single altcoin, um, in our case, Dash. So we've achieved a, a number of milestones in, in, in public market histories that, that I'm sort of particularly proud of. Um, in the short time um, that, that we've been around. And uh, ultimately, um, we're a very, very simple company where we own, we own masternodes and we generate revenue um, from those assets. Right. So, the, the, yeah, let's, let's get into that just briefly. It, it is a very simple uh, company. And I, I did some, you know, I looked into you and I, I did what research I could and, you know, verified that there is, you know, a company and that you are being traded on this exchange and things like that. Uh, and we'll get into that, but for a moment, you're 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 basically, as you said, you're operating master nodes. Now, are you you're not doing that out of your own servers? Are you are you having these hosted on a cloud? Or are you are you running the, the hardware yourself, or or how is it? Like, is this something you're running out of office, or is this something you're running on the internet? That's basically what I'm getting at. Most people actually don't know what a master node is, <laughs> and so I find that's always a really great way to start uh, an interview is to explain you know what is actually a master node and how does it work. Sure, go and um, effectively, a, a master node is a form of blockchain scaling architecture um, or f a type of blockchain, really, that allows um, users to basically take tokens, collateralize them on the blockchain and link them to a specific node. And when you when you link tokens to nodes on a blockchain, you're known as what's called like a trusted party or a trusted node on the network. And that makes you a master node. And um, the master node model allows for advanced functionality on a blockchain. But what master nodes are really known for are um, blockchain governance, um, because it allows master nodes basically to actively vote on treasury proposals and scaling governance decisions, and allows for blockchains or the stakeholders of blockchains to rapidly sort of come to consensus based on this voting mechanism. So it's it's quite an exciting type of blockchain, in, in my opinion. Um, I'm pretty confident that there's going to be more masternode type blockchains um, you know, developing in the future as, as people realize 
um, that corporate governance, or I should say blockchain governance, um, becomes a, a sort of more talked about issue in the space. And so that's what a, a master node is. Um, and, and for us, um, what that means is we actually need to host our own nodes. And so we, you know, there's a number of ways to do this. You could basically just have a server that's connected to, um, the particular blockchain that you're serving. And, uh, uh, we basically lease server space to a blockchain and get paid in tokens. So in our case, we originally had our own server. Um, but we, we actually found out that it was actually easier to just migrate um, the server space to the cloud. And so we actually use Amazon Web Services and use their server space, but we still collateralize our tokens on the blockchain um, in order for us to function. You're running 18 dash master nodes mm -hmm. and uh, you're basically, you're, you're, you have the, the constant stream of income coming from running those master nodes and those master nodes. So uh, the master nodes do a couple of special things and it's something interesting when we talk about Dash is that Dash is, is one of the only currencies out there that is currently offering a instant settlement uh, system, and that's through the InstaSend. Um, and then, then Dash also is one of the only currencies, one of the few currencies out there that offers um, anonymous or, or a more anonymized, in fact, uh, currencies, uh, transactions through private send. So the masternodes, they handle both of those sort of transactions. Is that right? That's, that, that's exactly right. So they're, at, they're adding sort of a service layer on top of the blockchain and handling these special uh, priority transactions. In exchange for that, the masternode gets the masternodes get about 45% of the dash that is mined in each block. Is that right? That's exactly right. Yep. So basically, over time, the, the masternodes are going to collect a certain amount of fees from doing what they do. And of course, in order to do this, you are staking, you're staking 1,000 dash per masternode and as, as sort of a collateral for uh, proof that you're going to do the right job, you're going to, you're going to prove blocks that are valid, that you're not going to be a bad actor in the system. Uh, is that right? That's exactly how it works, yeah. Yeah. So, so you're looking at right now, you're holding like 18,000 uh, Dash, running uh, 18 Dash masternodes. That's a pretty solid business model. I mean, do you have a lot of people working for you or is it just, you know, is it sort of just the directors or, or how does that work? Well, so we're we're a lean company. You're right. From an operational perspective, um, operating master nodes is not at the technical level um, that's required for, say, like a large scale ASIC mining facility um, where you actually need the expertise to set up like an entire data center and operate that data center economically over time. Um, operating master node assets are simple. Um, once you figure out how to store or custody the tokens safely and securely, um, which we do and you figure out how to link the tokens to the servers, um, your job really becomes ensuring that that server is optimized and never off the internet. Um, because if the servers or our master nodes actually um, aren't fully connected um, for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, we actually lose our payment cycle in the queue and we lose the opportunity to basically receive our portion of the block war for that period of time that were applicable to get it. So right. um, the blockchain basically functions and the, the Dash master nodes basically function in a way that you have to be connected all the time in order to get paid, um, which makes sense. But um, there's actually not um, a, uh, a significant amount of work required relative to mining. But we have um, four employees um, that work for us. Um, you know, one thing that we need to consider is uh, like the, the master node architecture is planning to upgrade and scale over time. Right. So the, the hardware requirements to operate a master node are, are relatively simple now. But if you look at how um, Dash uh, proposes to scale, um, they're, they're planning to keep the uh, transaction fees basically on chain, which means that um, they're planning on um, requiring master nodes to upgrade their hardware and uh, server capacity sort of over time to ensure on-chain on scale, on, on chain scaling. Right, yeah. So we, uh, Darren, Dr. Tapp uh, is, is a, uh, I don't know if you're familiar, he's on the show uh, with us, one of our, our co-founders. 
But yep. uh, he's in Arizona. It's unfortunate that he couldn't be with us to talk about this. But yeah, we've talked about the future of scaling with Dash and how master nodes are going to have to be beefed up to handle the capacity necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's looking forward. But then let's talk about a different aspect of your company. I mean, this is this is all solid stuff. I mean, you you you're, you have basically you have cash in the bank plus you have crypto in the bank and then you have master node persistent income as long as your nodes are online and active mm-hmm. i mean it's a pretty straightforward thing as long as you keep everything updated and operational but then you you have a company that is actually publicly traded now and that is that is a little bit more different in the crypto space there aren't too many that are publicly traded uh tell us a little bit about about that journey and and, and what that's like yeah so um as, as you said um you know, not that particularly challenging to operate mash node assets um, over time, as long as you're willing to put in the, the time required to learn that skill set. Um, but taking the company public um, was a little bit more challenging. Um, right. the, the first thing I, I would highlight is that um, we are a Canadian publicly traded company. And I'm not sure um, you know if your audience is up on how blockchain is developing in Canadian public markets. But um, to say the least, it's it's rapidly accelerating here in Canada in terms of the amount of capital that's being raised and um, the number of blockchain companies that are coming to market and listing here in Canada, which we're we're quite excited to see, right? And so yeah. um, Vancouver and Toronto are known as venture markets. Um, so uh, when marijuana companies started raising money and and going public. Um, They actually did so um, on the Toronto Stock Exchange here in Canada. And uh, that sort of started about three years ago. And now that's rapidly accelerating to a point where the cannabis industry here in Canada is actually one of the key, you know, pillars of of, of our our, our capital markets economy, if you will. And uh, here in Canada, we're basically building out a very, very similar structure um, with blockchain, where over the past four months, there's been about 10 public companies that have gone public um, that all either relate to mash node assets, mining assets, or um, other blockchain operating companies. And so um, you were in your earlier comment, you talked about how this is kind of a novel product um, with respect to public market investing. Um, and that's absolutely right. And it just shows how early in this space that we actually are. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're well ahead of the curve. And I think you're positioned really well as far as, you know, what assets you already have and, and structures in place. Keep, keep talking about that sort of stuff. Like the, we talk a lot about on our show about regulations around the world. And of course, we cover the United States. Yeah. Uh, but we haven't covered so much about what's going on in Canada. So, yeah, let's explore that space just a little bit. Sure. So um, let's talk a little bit about, I guess, the, the most well-known company in the space that really brought everyone's investor interest in Canada was a company called Hive Blockchain Technologies. And what Hive did was they actually purchased a portion of um, Genesis um, data center facilities in Sweden and, um, and other parts around the world. And so um, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Genesis Mining. Uh, yes. Exactly. So, so, so basically what Hive did was they, they, they purchased Genesis Mining and uh, Genesis Mining actually operates those facilities on behalf of Hive. And so it's actually really a way for um, Genesis Mining to go public, um, but not using their own name and brand and not having to give up all of their assets because they're only selling a portion of them to the, this publicly traded company. And so I, I think that um, we're going to see more and more of these types of transactions occur. And um, Hive did really, really well. It, I believe, IPO'd in September. And um, it, it was trading at all uh, up to $1.5 billion Canadian dollars in, in very, very short order. Um, and got basically everyone really, really excited here in Canada about investing in blockchain. Um, it, it's The blockchain industry is heavily, heavily... You know, promoted here in Canada, we we have uh, a blockchain event here in Toronto about every three days. There's a, a major conference that's put on about at least once a month, where Vitalik or um, uh, some other thought leader is actually you know the the keynote speaker here. And so, um, it, you know, although we've had a lot of organic development over the last three years, 
Um, there haven't been a lot of public companies who actually own either mining assets or mash node assets or some sort of ICO assets um, in the space. And so when Hive entered the market and, and, and deserved such a huge valuation, um, they ended up raising more money. And I think they raised about 120 million Canadian dollars in total. And, and, and they're doing fantastic. Um, and, and they're really great for the space. And they brought a lot of awareness. And several other companies followed suit. So um, HUD8 actually recently um, went public on the TSXV. And they did a, a very similar transaction to Hive, where they actually approached Bitfury and purchased a portion of Bitfury's um, mining assets here in Canada. I think it was all of, all of North America's mining assets um, from Bitfury. And um, while still allowing Bitfury to operate them, right? And so what you ultimately have is a, a pure play Bitcoin mining company operated by Bitfury, but Bitfury can still sort of main control a, 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 a lot of its core assets as it sees fit. And so um, the Canadian investor appetite is sort of rapidly developing for this type of business model. Um, and, and everyone's really, really excited about it. So um, a lot of the, the mid-tier investment banks are beginning to almost completely um, reimagine their business model by exclusively becoming blockchain investment banks. And so uh, the, the most well-known investment bank in the space right now is, is, is an investment bank called GMP Securities. And they've actually created a blockchain investment team that exclusively evaluates and reviews blockchain um, investing opportunities and takes those companies public. And so it was interesting to see, you know, the shoe drop because about a year ago, um, you'd never ever be able to see a, a publicly traded blockchain company. And now you're seeing um, entire investments banks basically re reinventing their business model to, to not exclusively, but to, to really focus in on um, blockchain as an investable asset class, very similar to the natural resource industry or the mining industry or the technology industry. Well, it's it's about time. Yeah, I mean, we've we've been uh, on you know, Neocash Radio. We've been covering crypto for going on five years now, and uh, it's 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 been a really wild ride. And now we're finally seeing uh, what you know we're talking about with Neptune Dash, in that there's publicly traded companies that are running master nodes, that are doing mining, that are doing a lot of these fundamental uh, you know infrastructure type um, level tasks that need to be done to keep these networks operational, to keep these networks secure. And then people can build upon these secure networks and these, these good blockchains because of this, this initial infrastructure and fundamental uh, investment and growth. Absolutely. So it's really exciting. And I think it's, it's you know, part of how cryptocurrency is going to go mainstream, right? And so, you know, we want to see, you know, Coinbase become a publicly traded company. Right. And we want um, uh, I, I'm sure that you heard about Poloniex being acquired by Circle, which is apparently backed by Goldman Sachs, for example. Right. And we want these sort of like very valuable blockchain infrastructure asset companies to go public. And, and, and the reason for that is it becomes more transparent. People become more familiar with the space. Um, um, they can actually review the, the financial and operating results. Um, and realize that there's really great profits. This is sort of a, a thriving business opportunity in an industry. Um, but the real thing is, is that in order for um, what I would call big money to enter the space, um, which would be sovereign wealth funds, um, institutional investors, and, um, and pension funds, um, they, they almost exclusively can't invest in private companies, um, nor can they custody um, cryptocurrency assets themselves. So basically what we're saying is that for the largest investors in the world um, who, who could easily deploy one or two to $10 billion in value off out of their single portfolio, um, they, they cannot enter the space um, unless these companies trade publicly because their investment mandate is to only invest in public companies, for example, right? And so this onboarding process really is what I believe represents the, the next sort of driver in, in, in increasing the valuations of cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrencies in general. And it's through this, this public, public company trading process. So you can imagine back in, um, in, 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 in the 90s, if every single technology company play, stayed private, or I would say, I should say, every single internet company 
stayed private and there was only 10 of them. Imagine how small that industry would be if these companies didn't go public, right? Um, and, and so I, I think we're at a very, very similar stage in cryptocurrencies where there's only 10 or 11 publicly traded companies and everyone's sort of like trying to figure out how to invest in these assets. So, so technically, um, the, the name of the company is Neptune Dash Technologies Corp. The, tick, the ticker is Dash, which we really love. And we trade on the TSX Venture Exchange. And so you started, you basically started your, your, I, your initial public offering was basically at the beginning of January. Was that right? Around that time frame? Exactly. We moved, we moved very, very quickly. So we, when we came up with the idea of this mash node model, first off, I want to point out to your viewers that like from an investment thesis perspective, investing in mash nodes makes a lot of sense because really what you're doing is you're raising capital and you're, you're, you're deploying 90% of that capital into the currency itself. Therefore, if Dash goes up, you know, 1x, 2x, 3x, or 4x, you know, our balance sheet um, and cash flows reciprocate that. So it's a super, super interesting model um, relative to uh, like the ASIC mining um, investment model where you basically raise money and have to build an entire data center out before you see a return, right? Um, so there's that aspect of a business that I want to highlight that I think makes it sort of like an, a very attractive um, value proposition. Um, from an exchange listing perspective, uh, it, it, it wasn't that difficult for us to go public because we have a very strong management team, um, that has a, a background in public companies. And so we're an entirely, you know, regulatory compliant, um, in, in that manner. So Troy, this is uh, Pedro. I have a few questions. Sure. So on um, an investor can, you know, invest in, um, Neptune Dash by buying these shares and, you know, the share price can vary. Mm -hmm. And then you also have, um, you know, monthly revenue from the master nodes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are you, are you using any of this monthly revenue to pay dividends or to, uh, you know, save up to get to the next point where you can, you know, do another master node? Yeah. Our goal is basically to pile up and store as much Dash as possible to have more master nodes. Right. So, uh, ultimately, we're just keeping all the Dash in our balance sheet. And when we have enough Dash to um, build another master node, um, that's exactly what we're going to do. And then, uh, you know, adding more master nodes increases the value of the company, which, you know, puts upward pressure on the price. So um, so all of it's being reinvested back into the, the core um, the core machines that make make the revenue. Absolutely. And um, if you look at our most recent news release, we made an announcement regarding an initiative that I'm leading called Neptune Stake. And so like what we've done is we, we've gone back and looked at our business model and said, um, you know, are there other ways that we can add shareholder value? And I don't know about you guys, but, but one thing that I'm particularly um, you know, interested in is this idea of proof of stake. Um, as a consensus algorithm, um, as well as um, staking, sta- just general staking as, as a business model. And so we, we basically went back and said, okay, well, what are the, the three ways that, w- that we can actually stake assets and earn income? And can we build a business out of it? And so the first way is mash node assets, which is what we're doing. Um, the second way is looking at proof of stake as a consensus algorithm, identifying those tokens that um, meet the criteria for proof of stake and, and, and staking those as well. And then the third is looking really way into the future and looking at layer two scaling solutions like the, like the Bitcoin Lightning Network, right? And looking at potential business opportunities surrounding setting up Bitcoin Lightning Hubs um, or Lightning, or sorry, or Litecoin Lightning Hubs or even Stellar Litecoin, or even Stellar, sorry, Lightning Hubs um, that allow for um, third-party payments to basically flow through your hub to earn income. And so we're, we're, we're basically beginning to, to go down that road and create a, a subsidiary company where we purchase um, those assets um, that allow us to stake and it becomes a rebalancing portfolio where every 30 days we'll rebalance the cryptocurrency assets under management Um relative to the valuations of each other so that um, uh, when someone invests in this company, what they're really getting is a rebalancing cryptocurrency portfolio over time while also earning staking revenue as well, which is great. 
So would it be a Nep- Neptune Ethereum, for example, or would it be a subset of, of Neptune Dash? So what, what we found right now um, is that we were a little early when it came to pure place, right? So um, for us um, that are like, sort of fully down the rabbit hole and can't even see the light of day, um, these cryptocurrencies are very distinct, right? So there's a big difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin and Dash um, and Stellar and, and all those things, right? But But for the typical venture investor, they actually don't know what the difference is. Um, They just know blockchain um, and they want exposure to that asset class. And so the question we need to ask ourselves is like, what is what is the best exposure vehicle um, to do that? And so the, the best exposure vehicle is a rebalancing portfolio of cryptocurrency assets um, um, over time. So that basically, if you see coin market cap increasing value, so does your portfolio. And if you see coin market cap decreasing in value, so does your portfolio as well. Um, but you don't have the centralized risk of any one specific peer play asset. And so what, what Neptune Stake allows us to do is to basically own these assets um, as we are not an investment fund um, because we are purchasing these proof of stake assets um, for the sole purpose of staking them now or in the future. Well, and where could people find out more about uh, Neptune Dash? So our, our website is um, neptunedash.com. I look forward to seeing what, what you do next. Yeah, as somebody that was in in um, crypto mining back in the early days. Uh, I'm really excited to see the proof of stake concept. Uh, I think it's really needed in, in blockchain, and I think it's some of the most cutting edge uh, computer science out there. Um, with with the prevalence of, of cryptos, you know, I, I think if we can secure those blockchains with staking instead of just power usage, uh, that's that's really exciting. Yeah, I know we're we're really excited about it. I mean, it, it is interesting to see sort of like the divisions um, uh, of uh, opinion on whether or not proof of stake um, will be sort of like a viable consensus protocol over time. Um, we actually don't know if it will be. We hope so. It's obviously got a, a, a myriad of benefits to being, um, you know, environmentally efficient and then just technologically more efficient, right? Um, but um, you know, with with the proof of work having such a, a long and successful operating history, we'll sort of have to see how um, these technologies play out and, and who will be the winner. All right, thank you so much for joining us, Trey Wong from Neptune Dash. And you can check them out at neptune-dash.com. Thank you so much for joining us, Troy. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this special episode of NeoCash Radio. Please check out our website at neocashradio.com. Like and share this video or podcast. This interview is not an endorsement or investment advice. I make no warranty about the claims or projections discussed in this episode. Please be mindful of any and all regulations regarding cryptocurrency in your particular jurisdiction. Never invest or gamble more than you're willing to lose and always safeguard your digital currency by keeping it in a wallet whose private keys you control.